You know, one of the things I believe that we do effectively is we actually lower the stress level for teachers. Yeah, we have a system, you have to learn it, you have to teach it, but it's a whole lot better than not having a system. Hello, and welcome to the Arts of Language podcast with Andrew Poudois, founder of the Institute for Excellence in Writing, or as many like to say, IEW. My name is Julie Walker, and I'm honored to serve Andrew and IEW as the Chief Marketing Officer. Our goal is to equip teachers and teaching parents with methods and materials which will aid them in training their students to become confident and competent communicators and thinkers. Well, listener, if you are tuning into this podcast right when we launch on August 10th, then you are probably getting ready to get back to school. And so this podcast is called Back to School with IEW. And so we're mostly going to be talking to classroom teachers, Andrew, and how do they, in the few days they have left, prepare their classroom, prepare themselves, you know, gird up their loins, as Mm. you sometimes say. (laughs) Coffee. Coffee. Chocolate. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> grass-fed beef. <laughs> so I actually had a conversation with our educational consultants here at IEW before I walked into this room to record this podcast, and they had some great suggestions that I think would be helpful. Well, that's good because they're on the front lines. Mm-hmm. They are the ones who take the phone calls from the teachers. Sometimes teachers are told with a relatively short runway, you're going to teach – Structure and style writing this year. Right, right. And so, you know, without a lot of prior experience, that can seem a bit overwhelming. Right, exactly, exactly. So let's um, start with kind of your philosophy, our philosophy about preparing the classroom. We have these beautiful classroom posters primarily for teachers of you know, grades three to 12, really, that are teaching, teaching writing structure and style. We also have posters for the primary ga- grades. But do we recommend to teachers that they take all these posters and put them all up right at the beginning? Well, no, absolutely not. Um, you know, I've had an opinion about classroom decoration for some time. And it's partly because I just don't really like cute so much. <laughs> I like meaningful And I also think that there needs to be an intentionality with everything that goes up on the walls or is given to students or put in their environment. So one thought, which could save people a bit of stress Mm -hmm. because sometimes there's that, I don't know, little competition who's got the best looking classroom on the first day of school. Uh, What if you just didn't do that and put took a kind of a minimalist approach, Mm -hmm. didn't put a whole lot of stuff to decorate, Mm -hmm. and put just one or two things that were meaningful. And then you could talk about those, whether it's art, which I think is very valid, beautiful art in the classroom, perhaps inspirational quotes. Mm -hmm. I was in a classroom at Hillsdale Academy a month and a half ago, and uh, it was an English classroom, and it the walls were just covered with the most amazing, beautiful calligraphy, inspirational quotes. What I didn't know is, did those go up gradually, or did they appear over a period of years, right. or what? But I did find it almost distracting because I wanted to just read the walls <laughs> rather than enjoy the discussion that was happening, uh, which was about uh, Sir Gawain and mm, Green mm-hmm. Knight. But you know, so inspirational quote. And then, of course, things that help you teach better, right? So our great patron, Mrs. Ingham, she often would underscore the importance of the idea. If you tell children something, show them as well. If you show them then tell them. And if you can get some kind of 
manipulative, some kind of tactile or kinesthetic element in there. Uh, thus, the blended sound sight program of learning. Mm -hmm. So uh, originally, when we started this many, many, many years ago, and before that, when teachers were coming to Canada for the two-week teacher training course, there were no printed posters. Mm -hmm. It was blank poster board, felt markers, <laughs> yep. yardsticks, rulers, you know, create your own. And so, you know, there was an advantage to that in that teachers had a lot invested and mm -hmm. they could make it just like they wanted it. The downside is it takes a lot of time and a lot of teachers these days don't necessarily want or have mm -hmm. the time to make all their own materials. Sure, all. So, sure. you know, the idea of start with a little bit and don't panic about blank space, knowing that you can gradually add to the mm -hmm. content on the walls things that are beautiful, meaningful, inspirational, useful mm -hmm. in what you're teaching. Yeah, right. I, c I can just imagine uh, an IEW teacher reserving some space on the wall and just calling it writing and nothing on there and then little by little adding to it and the kids coming into the classroom love that little intrigue of, oh, I wonder what Mrs. Walker is going to put on the wall today. Yeah. So that's always fun. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in our TWSS seminar book, mm -hmm. we have little icons, if you will, or mini representations of all sorts of reminder signs yes. and posters, things like the topic clincher rule or the preposition list, things that you could put up on the wall when you get to that point exactly. in the structure and style syllabus. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think there's a, a tendency to just want to have everything, give it to all the kids. Yes. But that's a little bit like too much. Right. You know, if you have too much information, actually we have a little idea about that. TMI, we don't like it. We don't want too much information. Uh, so giving them the appropriate information at the optimal time in the best possible way. Right. So I was going to mention for those teachers that don't have the wall space for our classroom posters to consider the portable walls structure and style folder. And that kind of smacks in the face of what you just said. Yeah. So if you are a classroom teacher and we're planning to pass these out on the first day of class. Just wait. Just wait. Yeah. They're a beautiful tool. Perhaps when would you pass them out? Maybe when they're in unit four or five or something? Well, you know, I think the ideal use mm -hmm. is that you have some wall space. Mm -hmm. You are adding things to it as you're working through the the units and the style techniques over the course of the school year. And then you probably start to run out of wall space. Yes. <laughs> okay. Right? It's true. At which point, then it might be appropriate to say, okay, all that stuff that was on the walls, mm -hmm. now we have similar content in this portable walls product. Yep. You can keep it in your desk. You can set it up on your desk and you can have all that stuff that was on the walls now right in front of you. I know I know we've talked about it before, but how the portable walls idea came into existence. Yeah, yeah. So for those who don't know, I was working with a school district in Rockland, California, which is uh, the Sacramento County area. And I was explaining to the teachers, you make this stuff and you put it on your walls and then the students have kind of a living reference in their environment and isn't this fantastic, especially for elementary, you know, grade three, four, five, mm -hmm. six. Those were the teachers I was working with. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was informed that <clears throat> the fire marshal of the county mm -hmm. had made an edict that – you could not cover more than a certain percentage of your walls with paper. I think it was 20 percent, some ridiculously low number. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, you bought this very expensive special fire-resistant paper mm -hmm. that, you know, you couldn't really get easily, nor would the school necessarily provide you an abundance of it. And I was just angry. I remember going getting some food and thinking, this guy, this fire marshal, it's just dumb. It's a stupid rule. It's not going to save anybody's lives or anything like that. 
the walls are all concrete anyway, so what's the point? Anyway, I just, I thought, he should be strung up, upside down, by his toes, in a room <laughs> full of caffeinated fourth graders, you know. <laughs> um, but then I thought, well, okay, it is what it is. And I was in the hotel, I thought, okay, if the children cannot go to the walls, the walls must come to the children. I love that. So I went over to the store and I bought a couple file folders, mm -hmm. and I taped them together, and then I used different colored paper, and I I created this mock-up of what I thought we could call portable walls, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. I brought it in the next day. I was all proud and yeah, excited. Yeah. I said, you guys can have your kids make these portable walls. And they, if you use two file folders and tape them together, they'll sit on the desk like a little— uh, what do you call that? A carol? Study carol, yeah. Study carol. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can just look up and see their LY word lists and their, you know, style checklist and their whatever you need, topic clincher, reminder rule or anything. And, of course, you know, that's a lot of time and work for a teacher to get a bunch of 10-year-olds to do. And then, I don't know, it was years later, uh, we were sitting around thinking we could make this mm -hmm. into a product. So it has the advantage of you don't have to make it, but it does have the disadvantage of TMI. Yep, yep. So uh, use use the resources appropriately. This is going to come up probably over and over again is the resources available to teachers in our premium membership. So, dear listener, if you are not a premium member, link in the show notes for you to become a premium member and what we what's in there are the mini versions of these classroom posters that they mm -hmm. can you know make as handouts for their students or stick them on the wall if your classroom isn't too right. too large honestly if you had the printing capability mm -hmm. you could make it larger and print it yeah, and they're full uh, in color. a larger size. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, or you could print the one and then make a larger one with your own felt markers yes. if you <laughs> felt so inclined. But, uh, yeah, the resources are well worth mm -hmm. the, the, the annual cost is very yeah. small. Yeah. So preparing your classroom, the good news is you don't have to do a lot to prepare your actual classroom for your students as far as teaching writing. But what about preparing yourself. As Andrew said, what if you were just handed the book and said, all right, you're using IEW to teach writing next year, blah, what do you do? So we talked about also in the premium membership is the teaching writing structure and style video courses. Video access, yeah. And you can give yourself a little refresher, assuming you've watched the whole seminar before and perhaps even became an accredited instructor through us because you completed all the assignments, but watch disc one and two to prepare for units one and two. Yeah, it doesn't, it, it's not going to take that long. And most people don't find it too tedious. I mean, there's embedded humor and things to think about. And, you know, once upon a time, I used to worry about selling people the same thing twice, mm, right? So mm. I, I would feel bad if someone came to or paid to come to the seminar, which we cram everything into two days nonstop, and then we'd sell them the video course, and I would think, well, that's, you know. But over the years, I have discovered that the teachers, tutors, people who watch this you know, several times, maybe once a year mm -hmm. for several years, they hear it and they understand it at a much deeper, more effective level. So, you know, I would encourage people, if it was a year ago and you taught through this thing and you kind of remember everything, it can't hurt to refresh yourself. Oh, absolutely. Because you'll hear things you didn't hear the first time. You'll have questions in your mind that you didn't have the first time because you've taught through for a while. And, you know, we, we generally do work with the school year. Mm -hmm. So uh, most all of our materials are set up so that Unit 1 and 2 is in August, mm -hmm. which... I mean, when I was a kid, school started in September yes. after Labor Day, but it <laughs> yes. seems the shift has has occurred. But, you know, Unit 1 and 2 in August, and then Unit 3 mm -hmm. in September, Unit 4 in November, 
Unit 5 maybe December spilling into January because there's a lot going on in December and mm-hmm. vacation and things. And, and moving through the school year with the nine units and just refreshing yourself uh, when you hit that new month, watch the hour, hour and a half generally. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what it is. You, if you've done the practicum exercises, you don't really have to do them again. I mean, mm-hmm. you could if you mm-hmm. wanted. Sure. But, and, and then you just feel, okay, I'm fresh. I'm ready. I'm feeling good. And then whatever materials you're using, if it's classroom resources or a theme-based book or something like that, you you just know what to do. And you don't have to kind of pour over the the teacher book to try to figure out how you're going to teach it. Right. And so you, you mentioned some curricular materials there. I do want to let teachers know that there's basically two ways, well, three ways, to teach structure and styles to your students. The easiest way is the structure and style for students video course. And we have packages for school teachers so that you can watch you teaching a group of students themselves, you teaching them, and then they basically do that same thing Monday morning. Right. So they're watching me teach a lesson and then they can steal my jokes and (laughs) drop off what they don't like, customize it for their kids. That is a superb way, especially, you know, if it's your first year. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And uh, so that's that's good. And we have, I know you want to mention. The TTAP. Yes. The Teaching Tips with Andrew Poudwa, which is a part of, guess what, the premium membership. Right. And so these coincide with the Structure and Style for Students video course. So if you have a, a group of fourth graders and you're going through Structure and Style for Students year one level A and you just completed week one, there is just a short 10 to 15 minute interview that you can watch where I am interviewing you, Andrew, and I'm asking you the questions that I imagine the school teachers would be asking. Right. Why did you do that? Mm-hmm. Or you know, when so-and-so said this or that, what, what, how did you respond? Uh, what would you suggest to prepare better right. you know, for this next lesson, et cetera? So, yeah, I, I enjoyed doing all those yeah. teaching tips. So that's available. So that's one way is use the structure and style for students video. I mean, you could show the video to kids, sure. but you could also just watch it and then right. recreate that right, yourself. Right, exactly. So. And the other way is theme-based writing lessons. We have a, a plethora of different levels as well as themes you could write about. You could write about Bible heroes if you're doing the primary grades. You could do medieval history-based writing lessons if you're doing Upper elementary and, and if you're school. in a, a public funded school, yeah. Bible heroes won't work. But we do have the people and places in community. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So there are options that are for sectarian or non sectarian uh, communities and schools, and so lots of great options there with theme based. And those are broken down day by day. And so the t- every student has their student book, and the teacher has their book, and it's pretty easy to go through that. They don't have you telling jokes, but it's still laid out pretty easily for them. And, of course, the third way is for them to just create their own lessons. And a lot of the content that you can gather from either your own history book, your own science book, or, again, we have resources available to you in the premium membership that can help you create your own lessons using the structure and style approach to teaching your students. So equipping yourself so that you're more able to equip your students. You've got, what, 10 days left, go, or maybe less than that. (laughs) Well, there's a lot, a lot to think about. And, you know, one of the things I believe that we do uh, effectively is we actually lower the stress level for teachers. Yeah, we have a system. You have to learn it. You have to teach it. Mm -hmm. but, But it's a whole lot better than not having a system right. and having kind of a fuzzy writing curriculum or no real writing curriculum right. and just saying, well, we teach grammar, you know, or we teach literature or prepare the kids for creative writing using prompts. That, that whole world is – it's just not easy. Mm-hmm. And so many teachers have said to us, this saved my life. I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> obviously, that's hyperbole. They would have survived. But metaphorically, 
it made their life teaching writing so much easier. Right. And, of course, lots and lots of stories of students who came back to the teacher a year or two after and said, I learned so much in your class and Mm -hmm. it really helped me when I went off to high school or off to the middle school where they didn't do structure and style or whatever. Right. And so, you know, I think part of the way we strive to bless the world (laughs) is to actually lower the stress level right. of teachers and tutors and parents and administrators. Right. And and speaking of that, I do want to mention that our schools division, we have, and as I, I started off this podcast talking about our educational consultants, they are there to answer your questions. Every school that we are working with is assigned their own educational consultant. And whether it's the administrators or teachers, you are welcome to call them, ask them questions. They are all trained with IEW. Many of them have taught IEW in their classrooms. And what a great resource. And this applies to both the full-time, four- or five-day-a-week schools, as well as the hybrid schools that only meet twice a week. Mm -hmm. They do have uh, an educational consultant as well. Now, You know, we do have homeschoolers, of course, who are listening to this podcast. Thanks for listening. Thanks for not giving up on us. And, of course, you have your resources in the customer service team. Again, every single person in our customer service team has gone through the teaching, writing, structural, and style often many times. Mm -hmm. And so they're able to answer your tough questions like, what's the topic sentence of a unit five? (gasps) It's the central fact. Right. Right. What do you see in the picture? That's so easy. Well, and we make that a very high priority. Mm -hmm. I mean, when a question from someone who's really at the moment trying to remember or figure out how to use something they've got from us, if they chat or email or call, that's that's the top priority of Mm -hmm. our team. So, you know, feel free. Don't don't hesitate to contact our wonderful group of experienced experts. Exactly. And another thing that I want to mention about our schools division, a resource available to teachers, and this is primarily for full-time schools, but hybrid schools could take advantage of this as well, and that is we have a couple of implementation coaches who are willing and able to go out to your school and do an observation day. So they're watching your teachers and giving them some helpful feedback and some, yes, you did that really well, and let me help you do this a little better. That's the observation day. But they also do a demonstration day where there's just no possible way I can figure out this unit six. Could you come and teach my class and get them started? And yeah, we can do that. And you can schedule Uh, an implementation coach, to come out to your school. And I know you've done this before, Andrew, where you've had the other teachers of that grade observe you. So I guess they get subs for the class. Yeah, that's usually what it is. I mean, if you're going to spend the money to bring someone to your school, then having some subs so that the most teachers can have the most benefit. Also, I've had uh, schools uh, video Mm -hmm. record for in-house use only, of course, but video record the demonstration lessons so that if they don't have the freedom to get as many teachers in to observe as they would like, they have that available for them. And, uh, you know, a lot of schools will plan to have a faculty... Professional development. Professional development, Mm -hmm. half day, every couple months, and as a group, kind of review discuss, ask and and answer questions for each other. And in fact, we have even been able to do kind of a Skype in uh, or a webinar style Mm -hmm. where one of our implementation people can come straight into your conference room at your school (laughs) and answer questions for an hour. That's great. Uh, so, and, and that we usually don't charge anything for that kind of thing. So uh, we are 100% committed to your success. Yes, exactly. And I, I, I want to mention two more resources that are available. We've, we've talked quite a bit about the Structure and Style for Students video course. And Andrew, when you 
talk about demonstration lessons. In some ways, that's what this is for those teachers. They can watch you demonstrate how to do this new unit, how to teach this new stylistic technique. And that's great. We are actually doing a webinar in just a few days on August 15th. So if you're listening to this podcast before then, mark your calendar. If you're listening to this podcast after August 15th, then go to our webinar archives page where Andrew and I are going to be or will have (laughs) discussed the structure and style for students and just kind of all things structure and style for students and how to use it in various settings and some, some interesting strategies that you can use. But the other thing I wanted to mention is a blog post that was written by Jean Nichols, and she was actually part of that Rockland The Rockland group. School District, yeah. Yeah, and Amazing. she works for us now and does a lot of the blog posts for us. She wrote a blog post called Off to a Strong Start, mm-hmm. and she has several strategies about setting goals, about starting the year with a writing sample, just like you do in the Structure and Style for Students. All right, kids, sit down. You're going to write for 20 minutes. And, of course, the kids are like, we hate this. But yes. then you start that. That's your— What I always say is collect those things. Don't even read them. Just throw them in a manila envelope, label it, stick it in a drawer, and then start teaching unit one, unit two, unit three. Work through the nine units. And then at the end of the school year, give them the exact same prompt with the exact same amount of time, basically ignoring them in the exact same way, and then pull out the ones from August— pass them out and let the kids see their improvement. And oftentimes it is just dramatic. Yes, yes. I I love that exercise. And that would be a really awesome thing for all of our teachers to do that, regardless of the homeschool or hybrid or full-time environment. That could be a really valuable Well, and it's an informal assessment so that you're able to see or an administrator is able to see very easily Yes, there is qualitative progress here. You know, what did you do then and what can you do now? Mm -hmm. So this qualitative assessment, I think, is fantastic. It allows a teacher to also show parents who may have a question, you know, what's my kid going to learn in your class this year? Well, here's what here's the qualitative comparison of maybe a high, medium and lower aptitude student at the beginning and the end of last year. Mm -hmm. Read them. Look at it. See the difference. And uh, again, this can be very dramatic. Yes, yes. Another thing that Jean writes in her blog post is this idea of a writing portfolio. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this beginning of the year, ending of the year, that can kind of be at the end of the portfolio just to really compare. And we have the students build a writing portfolio in the Structure and Style for Students video course. That's part of what you get where the students are organizing their binder at the end of every class and just kind of helps with the whole paper management thing. But if you're not using SSS, still to have the students keep their writing throughout the year, I think they'll see themselves not just their improvement, but wow, the volume of work, because just like an, mm-hmm. any art, Andrew, right, you have to do this a lot to be able to, to improve. Yeah, the, the more you can do, the more likely you will be to improve. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, we could also point people, if they haven't heard already, the talk on the four deadly errors and some of the tips on kind of a minimalist approach to marking and grading. Yes. Because it's, it's really so much more about process than product. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, again, uh, one of the reasons that students in schools don't do more writing is it's such a burden on teachers to have to deal with it all and mark it or grade it or store it or do something with it. So the easier, uh, lower friction route would be to just do less. Mm -hmm. But that's not going to benefit the students who actually would gain from doing more even without a whole lot of feedback grading and stuff like that. Right. So, yeah. yeah, very good. Well, I hope this has been helpful to you, dear listener, whether you're in the classroom or whether you're at home at the dining room table with your kiddos. I do believe that investing in yourself, Andrew, we talk about that occasionally, you, not them, you know, investing in yourself so that you are ready to be able to do great teaching to change the world. Well, that is what we are all about. So, thank you. Thank you.
Thanks so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more, please subscribe to our podcast in iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, or Spotify. Or just visit us each week at IEW.com slash podcasts. Here you can also find show notes and relevant links from today's broadcast. One last thing. Would you mind going to iTunes to rate and review our podcast? This really helps other smart, caring listeners like you find us. Thanks so much.